Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, and actually welcome to some of you guys because I saw while we haven't been posting in the last week or so, we had a few new subscribers. So thank you for finding what we're posting valuable. Going off of that today, I wanted to go over five tips if you're gonna do your engagement session at the beach. Tip number one, I would absolutely recommend that if you're gonna do an engagement session, do it on a weekday instead of a weekend. Uh, the reason for that, I know that you know a lot of people have nine to five jobs, so I will get into that in one second, but the reason for doing it during the week instead of on a weekend is that that's when most people are off. So during those moments, it's gonna be super, super crowded at the beach and it's just gonna make it difficult to get any kind of privacy or any shot where you're not gonna have you know 100 people running around in the back. Now we can work around it and we have worked around it in case a couple comes in from out of town, but if you can avoid it, try to book it on a weekday instead of a weekend. Going off of that previous point is tip number two. Tip number two is try to book it as close to sunset as you possibly can. If you're a photographer, remember that your clients, your couples, they're gonna trust that you know what you're doing. So if you recommend it to them and let them know, hey, listen, let's shoot at this time because one, there's gonna be a lot less glare on the water and two, it's gonna be a lot softer light. It's gonna look a lot nicer. The lighting is gonna look better on you guys, on the background, on everything they're probably gonna go for that. Remember that this may be the first time that they're booking anything like this. So remember that this may be the first time that they're booking any type of photo shoot at all. So try to help them so they get the best photos. And now if you're a couple, understand that shooting in the middle of the day, although it seems like it's better because there's more light, the light is super harsh at that time. And in the afternoon, you're gonna get photos that you're gonna like a heck of a lot more. Tip number three is something that is very specific if you're shooting at the beach, which is check the tides before you nail down a date. So for example, if I know I'm shooting, actually just yesterday, we booked an engagement session at the beach uh, next month. And as we were going back and forth, I realized that the tide was gonna to be too high that day. Usually if you check a, a tide chart and literally just Google wherever you live. So if you live in San Jose or San Diego, just Google uh, San Diego tide extended forecast and it'll show you the next two, three weeks, something like that, usually about a month out. And you can see, I mean, I'm not a surfer, so I don't know the exact numbers and all this stuff, but if I see that high tide is right at sunset, I'm not gonna to wanna to book a session then. I'm gonna to wanna to book it when it says low tide and it's around the time that we're gonna be shooting. So pay attention to that. Um, if you shoot at high tide, it's very unlikely that you're gonna get that much space to work with. There are times where I've been to the beach and it's high tide and it's coming up all the way up to the to the edge of the of the cliff and there's no way we're getting down on the actual beach. So check the tides, uh, make sure you do that before you finalize what date you're gonna shoot there. Again, you know, if you're a photographer, your couples will trust you. They're gonna understand that you know what you're talking about. And if you're a couple and you wanna do a little extra work and you know, check that you're on the right track, check the tides. Again, it's super easy to find and you'll be glad that you did because you're gonna have so much more beach to work with. All right, so another tip that I would give you guys is make sure that if you're gonna be shooting at a very popular place to double check if you need a permit because there are some beaches here in California where you're gonna need a permit just for that beach. So for example, with parks, there's a permit that you can get that will give you permission to shoot basically, a, there's like dozens of parks that are within that umbrella. But then there are some places that you need a specific permit just for that location. Um, now for beaches, I know that one of them is Victoria Beach, which is super popular. It's the one with the castle thing that's leaning up against the, the cliff. And that one, you do need a permit. I think it's like 150 or something like that, or 175, I can't remember. But it will only be valid for that day, for that time, at that beach. So you really, really, really have to want to shoot at that beach in order to you know, obtain the permit. Um, they're gonna want your liability form, which you should have if you're, if you're shooting a few dozen jobs a year. They're, you're gonna get asked for that at a lot of places, so you might as well just have it. And then yeah, and then you reserve your spot for that place. So if you're gonna shoot at a place that's very popular, but um, you know has a number that you can call, find out, make sure it's better to be safe than sorry, because you don't wanna show up and then they either kick you out or they cite you, which I think there, it was like $500 or something like that. I heard that that's how much a citation is. I don't think it's worth taking a chance. You know, the permit is probably like 100, 150 bucks. Uh, the citation's 500. 
or you could be getting kicked out of there. It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Personally, I'd rather shoot at a place where you just don't need a permit because especially with a beach, I don't see it looking that much different to be worth all that hassle. Uh, of course, there are some couples that are like absolutely set on that's where they want to go. And of course, you know, we do what they, they want us to do. We do, we go through the whole process of getting a permit and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to mention that because don't want to be kicked out halfway through a shoot. And the last and final tip that I'm going to do for this one, because I want to keep it brief, is bring flip flops and a towel for two reasons. Flip flops, because even though the rocks that we walk on, they don't look all that sharp and all that jagged. Trust me, when you're walking on them barefoot, it starts to hurt. And obviously you don't want to have nice shoes on the beach because it sometimes looks a little weird. Yeah, you don't want to be barefoot because obviously you don't want to cut yourself up or hurt yourself and it's just annoying to walk. So just bring a pair of cheap flip flops, something that you don't care about. Don't be bringing no Gucci slides that you're going to be upset if they're going to get sand on them. Um, <laughs> just bring something that you can uh, mess up if you need to. Uh, and then towels. Bring towels just in case at the end uh, sometimes we get a little, I'd like to call it adventurous, and we like to do this shot where the waves are going around our couple and there's a slow shutter speed and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm not gonna bore you with the details how we shoot it, but if you're interested, shoot us a message or leave a comment below. It, when that's happening, they're gonna get their feet wet, they're gonna get, and sometimes they're gonna get completely wet, which happened once. Nimi and Uni, I'm sorry. I did give them a ride home after that though, because they were Ubering, because anyway. So yeah, bring a towel just in case you get a little wet at the end. Uh, so yeah, flip-flop, towels. One thing that we try to do always is put our stuff in a bag and put it away from where the waves could potentially hit. There's been times where the waves have come and they hit our lighting bag and you know, it, it was fine because it was zipped up, but uh, I try to be careful with that. There's plenty of more tips that I'm sure I could think of for this, but I just wanted to keep it brief. I wanted to keep it to five. So let me know if you guys have any questions, comments, anything at all, suggestions uh, for future videos. Leave a comment below and let us know what you guys think. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys probably next week. <laughs>